So, a lot of people in the community will know him probably better as Jam. Um, he's come quite a way to come and speak to us, and uh, yeah, I'll let him uh, give his. Uh, it's about. So the value that community brings, and uh, Jam's going to give us a talk on that. Excellent. So last one, yeah, I'm kind of like, my battery's like, whoa, well, yeah, you uh, So I'll give it over to Jam, who's like full of energy and is going to inspire us, and then we'll all get drunk later on and have a drink. Okay, so over to Jam. Thanks. Thank you so much. How long do I have? Uh, you have like 40 minutes. Okay. Some, is there a timekeeper? Someone needs to tell me when it's five minutes to go, please. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. So, yes, most people call me Jem. Um, if you call me Jeffrey, I might call you Mum by accident. I apologize in advance. I, my title is Community Affairs Manager at Acquia, and so I was fairly flattered to be asked to do the community focused session on this business day. Very quick introduction, uh, my responsibilities at Acquia include sponsoring uh, events like this and talking, uh, translating between the business world and the technology community in both directions. And um, I have the privilege of representing and evangelizing both the Drupal project and open source uh, around the world. And uh, it's, it's a really exciting time to be involved in these things that we do. This is a slide I stole from Dries Buttart. Is everyone aware by this time of the day who Dries is? The project lead of Drupal. Um, he talks about, in this case, how open source leads to collaboration, and that leads to a feeling of community, which drives innovation within our software project. And this is certainly very important, and it's one of the values that I'm going to be talking about today. Um, in general, I'd like you to keep aware that uh, every time you download Drupal, every time you fire it up, every time you begin a project, you are benefiting from millions of hours of coding. Patches from a lot of people in this room and a lot of people all over the world. And, you know, if they were being paid by the hour to write that, you can imagine what software like Drupal might cost. Uh, cost. So. Fundamentally, everything that you've heard today, everything you're going to be hearing about this week, and hopefully as you continue and use Drupal, uh, it's the product of a new kind of a society. It's a new way to collaborate. It's a new way to work. It's something that didn't really exist 10 or 15 years ago. Hey, Steve. Um, so I'd like to um, know just a little better who, who I'm talking to. Who is here assessing... Drupal deciding whether they are going to be using Drupal or open source software for um, their company, their own business, for their own projects. Drupal assessors kicking the tires. Who is already working in Drupal for a company uh, that's not their own? And who does projects for clients? Okay, so the way we're going to talk about this today. Um, you two tire kickers, stick with us, ask any questions you have. Um, the way I want to talk about this today is we have to have a lot of conversations as Drupal business people to sort of justify ourselves. It's getting better. Um, I, I met a guy from a digital agency on the train today. I found it really encouraging. He was telling me, oh, well, we have our own uh, PHP CMS, but we're getting pretty tired of uh, doing a lot of busy work to maintain feature parity with other things, and people are coming to us now and asking for Drupal. Specifically, So I thought that was a, a good sign. But there are times when you're going to be in the room competing against proprietary systems, uh, competing against other software projects. So <clears throat> um, my hope is that you'll find it helpful to know a little bit of how the business side thinks and a little bit of the, um, the way that you might talk about open source with them. Obviously, you also have to talk about the specific project, what your differentiators are, and so on. But um, my proposition here is that there's real value in the definition of open source software. So, 
I think that to be successful today, businesses need to be innovative. Uh, they need cost savings. This has always been true, um, but however fat the times were in the past, in our memories, they are never going to be that fat again. And whether it's the current recession, um, the recent financial troubles with the euro, um, these crises have actually been a real benefit to us since we have a software product that has a price tag of zero. So expectations are changing around that. But anyway, you can offer a lot of differentiation because of the different way that money is involved in our project. And businesses, if they're smart, obviously need to mitigate risk. Um, so things have changed a lot in the last 10 years. I find, I find this a really interesting quote. Um, oh, well, it's, uh, gosh, it's 12 years ago now. So 12 years ago, a guy called Jim Alchin at Microsoft was saying that he couldn't imagine something worse for the software business than open source software. How many people here pay their rent uh, with open source software? Right, so it's been okay for business, I think. <laughs> now, the next slide is a quote from 10 years later. And this is cute, and I think it really was, for a given value of true in 2010-11, this is, this is okay. Um, things have changed radically in the last two years. Microsoft ported Hadoop to run on Windows and has made significant contributions to the Hadoop code base. Hadoop is a database for processing large amounts of data, et cetera, et cetera, on distributed networks of machines. Microsoft contributes to Node.js significantly. Microsoft has a cloud hosting platform called Azure, which runs Linux, which runs PHP applications. Um, they are a different place. I was at the Microsoft headquarters in Vienna earlier, let's see, last year, and there's a real commitment there. It's a different company, and they're doing things really differently. So, so proprietary software is in many, many, many ways the opposite of what we do as open source business people, but the times there are a change in, and this, you know, being open source won't be the differentiator that it is f forever. So, um, and I suppose the, 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 the interesting point to make about Microsoft specifically is, uh, I was told by a, the head of engineering in Switzerland for Microsoft that if we had, we being Acquia in that case, if we had a big deal in Switzerland that hinged on Drupal working on Microsoft infrastructure, he would guarantee it, he would send engineers, and he would make them work as long as it took to fix whatever the problem was. So Microsoft has seen that we are um, running a lot of the web, and that we're doing very, very well, and they want a piece of that. But it's great for us because there are a very large normal, uh, number of organizations in the world who are completely Microsoft shops, and they run IIS servers and complete Microsoft infrastructure. But now, if you want to bid on a project, and it's dependent on working with Microsoft technology, this is not a barrier for you. So Microsoft being interested in what we are doing opens your horizons as business people tremendously. And um, you know, as much as we like to joke about this, this is this is a, the landscape is really, really changing, and it's important to be aware of it. I also think that things are changing um, around the idea of open source. Um, Larry Lessig, who, in, who uh, was one of the creators of Creative Commons licensing, has left the whole world of copyright and copyleft, and he's been worrying about corruption in politics for the last couple of years, and his premise is that money per se in politics corrupts the process. Not, he's not so worried about, you know, this kind of corruption. Um, he wrote a really interesting book about how he thinks that the United States political system could be fixed. Um, it's never going to happen. But um, he did say in the introduction, uh, he's, he's talking about, he says, the, in the world of computer software, open source communities develop and improve ideas organically based on concepts and practices that work driven by innovation, contributed by individuals. Open source simply means that a system is available to any who wish to contribute. It provides the fastest possible rate 
of improvement for ideas. And this is really exciting. And you look at how our project moves and how fast we adopt new technologies. It's a great advantage that we have. Um, but you can see the open source ideas trickling out now, trickling out beyond software and changing how people are doing things. Uh, the Drupal project, being a very, very large project, has in a way been a social experiment that's running, been running for the last decade. And we've been trying out new models of governance and conflict resolution and uh, collaboration, and they've been working very, very well. And when Lawrence Lessig was interviewing people in the United States political scene in the last couple of years, he met people from the Occupy Wall Street movement, and he met people from the Tea Party movement, who are about as far apart as you can get on that particular political spectrum. And they both said, oh, but we're an open source political movement. For what that's worth, um, um, you know, and there's also this idea, uh, there's a very Silicon Valley word that I don't like called co opetition where Apple and Samsung sue each other on one level and make chips for each other on another. Um, you have uh, Sony, Rec Sony Music, I think it's called now, and Warner Brothers Records both contribute significant development to Drupal so that they don't have to worry about, they're not in the job of building technology, so they contributed things that they both needed for artists' websites, and then they both use Drupal and compete on the business level. So, so these, these possibilities, they're incredible new ways to work together that open source offers us. Um, can open source business succeed? All of us who are paying our rent with it, I think we could agree. A couple of examples at, a, at another scale. Uh, who's familiar with this logo? Okay, and this number? In, in, in others. But in English, we have this special problem with free, and there's a whole psychology of, of this in the English language. However, free, free on the internet is, is working okay, right? There are some projects that, uh, you know, we're all using. Drupal has a license co licensing cost of zero, and it can save you money, and it can save your clients money. Nobody has money to waste anymore. Nobody ever will again. The bottom line is always going to count, okay? And the zero price tag is really important in how we run our businesses as Drupal business people. And uh, for the tire kickers here, I hope that's not offensive to you, but the people who are checking out Drupal, uh, you know, it really lets you invest in a completely different way. But uh, there's a guy called Dan Ariely, and he wrote a couple of books that I really, really like. The first one is called Predictably Irrational, and the second one is called The Upside of Irrationality. And he talks about the psychology of free, but he doesn't spell it F-R-E-E. -E. He spells it in all caps with an exclamation point, free. And how many of you will walk into a shop, and you have no intention of spending any money that day, but, you know, you can get four T-shirts for the price of two, you know, and uh, this, you know, the idea of getting something for nothing is incredibly powerful. And if you pitch your clients with free software and then start sending them your bills, right, and the bandwidth and the host, uh, don't set their expectations around free. Set their expectations around uh, these other things that we're going to be talking about today. Um, the software happens to have a zero price tag, but IT costs money. Uh, it, it, you know, it will let you invest differently. You can invest in your own team. You can invest in your own vision, okay? Every IT project ha costs money. You've got to pay people to work on it. You've got the hosting. You've got bandwidth design. But if you don't have a licensing fee and you're free to use the tools that you want, and those happen to be free in our case as well, okay? You can invest in your own team. You can buy as much as you need when you need it, okay? There are thousands of companies in the world who you can work with. There isn't, a, you know, a UK regional distributor network, and if you have a problem with your service provider, you're stuck, and, you know, you can't get out of the license, and it's not doing what you need. You're not stuck with Drupal. There are, there are thousands of, of companies who can help you out, and, and tens of thousands of professionals who can help you out. Um, 
Somebody online said a long while ago, uh, open source means never having to ask for your data back. I like that one. Um, you know what? If you've got a freaky edge case, something really, really interesting to do, and you ask Sitecore to do it, if they don't have at least 100 or 500 other clients who are asking for that at their price point, they are probably not going to implement it. If you need it and you have a Drupal developer or you hire the services of a Drupal developer, you can get that thing, even if you're the only people in the world who need it. Chances are, especially if you put it back in the repository, chances are there are going to be other people who need it and you'll benefit from their help at a later stage too. If Sitecore decides that they will implement the feature that you requested, once it's gone through meetings and planning, gone upstairs for approval, back to the VP who signed off on it, being prioritized, you know, they'll give it to you in a year or 18 months, okay? But if you can afford the development, if you have the skills yourself, you can get that new thing done when you need it. And given all of this, change happens in Drupal very rapidly, and it keeps it cutting edge. Jeff Robbins, another lullabot, another person I admire. Uh, this is getting back to the topic of free. Free! Drupal's free! He says Drupal's free as in puppies. Okay? You're trading a price tag for some more responsibility. Open source software needs expert implementation. It needs someone to take care of it. That's what we're here for. Um, but um, do you want to build your business on something that someone else controls? Do you want your government to be basing its services on software that can be turned off tomorrow, that you know, will cost twice as much next year? In the restaurant business in the United States, there's a saying, you gotta own the bricks. You rent some place, you do really well, the landlord sees that you're doing really well, comes back when your lease is up and says, hey, you're doing really well. I'm gonna charge you twice as much now. Uh, you don't want to be in that position. You want to own your own bricks. You, you want to own the building that you have the restaurant in, okay? Drupal, in this case, open source software, is the bricks. It's yours, and you're in control of it. And you'll be in control of it forever. <clears throat> this is a concept I love talking about. So, people who are going to be buying from us as service providers, plug your ears, plug your ears now and say la 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 la. Um, Service providers, please don't make your sales based on undercutting of prices. It doesn't help you. It doesn't help, you know, our community. Um, and it's always a race to the bottom. It doesn't, it doesn't really work out. The argument that you can make if you know that someone has a budget of X to spend on a project is that you can pretty much guarantee them a better result for the same amount of money. Okay? So... Um, this, and this has a lot of really, really interesting, a lot of really interesting consequences. So imagine, let's see, oh, here we go. So I have 100 money for my project. And I have the choice between, um, forgive me, but, you know, I work for a company and um, Drupal, yeah. <laughs> my, my bad. Um, you have 100 money and I'm choosing between an open source a service provider and I'm choosing between a proprietary service provider. Um, I have implementation costs. <coughs> They're about the same. Hosting and support, you know, they also cost money. Licensing fees are not the same. So, what do I care about? Whatever it is that I care about, branding, design, strategy, functionality, integration, you know, building a best of breed solution, um, you know, here's my website um, at, at uh, 70, right? Everything's already done at 70, but now what, with, with my other 30 money, I could build an ERP integration and a CRM integration and take everything so much further, okay? Open source gives you the possibility to build best of breed solutions. It will, Drupal especially, will integrate with the things that are working in a company now, and it's going to be able to integrate with whatever's coming tomorrow and whatever the next thing is. So as a Drupal service provider, or as a purchase, a purchaser of Drupal, 
products and services. Your money goes a lot further, okay? So build better. Don't build cheaper, build better. So this was a little bit about the first freedom, the fact that you're free to use it, okay? The next freedom is the, the fact that you're free to understand it. You're free to understand what you're using. Jeff Eaton, I quote him a lot because he's awesome. Jeff Eaton says, the bad dies or gets fixed in open source software. Quality and security are common outcomes of transparency. So, Drupal is in use all over the world uh, in, in a lot of agencies. Uh, open source is not automatically faster or more secure or higher quality. It is potentially so, okay? I'd say it is with Drupal. But open source is automatically transparent. You can see what you're getting and you can make better decisions about it. Uh, governments around the world are constantly assessing Drupal for security. The uh, senior information assurance official at the something, uh, what is this, the cabinet office? Anyway, this is uh, something from The Guardian where he says, it is wrong to believe that open source software is implicitly insecure according to the government's main official on the subject. Great! This is great. I don't like the rest of the article because it goes on to say that um, the only differentiation that people, uh, uh, government departments, should be using when they're choosing between open source and proprietary source is uh, cost and ROI. And what I'm trying to tell you today is that there's an awful lot more to the choice to use open source software than its price tag. And there are some powerful and important consequences beyond that. You can look at Drupal's source code and you can make decisions about how secure it is, whether it's appropriate for your kind of business, if you're able to understand that. If you have your own security expert, if you have people you trust, they can look at it, they can make these decisions. I don't have that expertise personally. I can look and see the kind of places using it. Uh, thanks, phase two, for this slide. These are all United States agencies. I apologize. We the use City of London uses it as well, the government of Belgium, a lot of other people. These people, these agencies, and also the US Department of Defense, NASA's pretty cool, um, plus the New York Stock Exchange, they think Drupal is secure enough. Any given morning of the week, there are dozens of security researchers pounding on Drupal, talking with the Drupal security team, okay? So for me, this ends up being good enough, but you don't have to listen to me, you don't have to listen to anyone else, you can make that choice yourself. Forrester Research, a lot of people, a lot of business people really care what Forrester says, says that uh, in the pharmaceutical industry, people they were talking to said that uh, open source code bases are an advantage because they are probably more secure than proprietary ones. Here's the statement from the Department of Defense in the United States. Continuous and broad peer review enabled by publicly available source code supports software reliability and secure, security efforts. Everyone know the, knows the White House is using it. We already saw London's using it. Um, Drupal's also showing up in really cool, interesting, um, really cool, interesting ways. Um, it's kind of an aside, and it has nothing really to do with this topic of security and, and, and uh, studying the code, but um, the White House has a GitHub repository, and they put this code on it. How cool is that? Okay. Now, governments, see, when I said open source is your license to change the world, um, governments have money, in the best case, um, and they have a mission they want to uh, policy by building a bridge across a river, therefore commerce will flow, therefore their population does better. They might want to affect policy by supporting vaccination programs in another country so that that country does better they, and, and you know, the consequences trickling down back in, you know, between the countries is supposed to make the world a better place. Unfortunately, gov governments also might think uh, bombing the crap out of another country will make the world a better place. These are typical ways, however, that governments spend money to affect change in the world. <laughs> Open source software Five minutes, okay. Open source software makes it possible for them, instead of spending the money to build a bridge or drop a bomb, they can build this kind of infrastructure and share it 
and everyone in the world, and the government of any other country, can use the infrastructure that your government built to affect change in the world. This is, an inc this is, a, this is a fundamental change in how things work. I think it's in, in incredibly interesting. Um, I made an infographic with the Drupal security team together about um, how the Drupal security process works. It's Creative Commons license. You can print it out. You can use it in your pitches. I encourage you to do so. It was really fun to make. So, you're also free to modify the code. With open source, you have the freedom to build what you need when you need it. If a proprietary solution is buggy, it might never be fixed. If it only does 80% of what you want, when do you get the other 20%? As I explained before, your priorities might not match the priorities of a proprietary software vendor who's trying to match the 80-20 case. Openness triggers innovation. Eric von Hippel, incredibly interesting book, predicted what was going to happen with open source well before it happened. Users generally have a more ac accurate and detailed model of their needs than manufacturers have. But okay, what does this mean? And I am apologize, I'm going a little fast now. In the classic manufacturing model, there are manufacturers who make something and mm, broadcast it, distribute it, pass it on to users, consumers of that thing that they're making. In Drupal, I'm writing Drupal code, and I'm using and I'm using Drupal code, and all of a sudden we are the manufacturer and the user at the same time. Okay, so we have the most accurate model of what we need and the power to make our tools ourselves. This is in in incredible, incredible power and incredible value to to customize to make whatever it is that your clients or your business or your vision requires on the web. You are free to share the results of those modifications. Build a perfect solution to run the government department, and you can package it, and you can pass it on to all the other government departments, other countries, even. Um, you're free to use the best solutions and reuse them, and you can improve efficiency. And if you take a Drupal distribution or a feature, not only do you have the millions of hours of coding that have gone into Drupal, but you have someone who understands your problem space as well. Whether that be school administration, whether that be media publishing, whether that be e-commerce, you have someone who understands that problem space and has solved a great deal of it, has tested things, and you can work together with them to make it better as well. It gives you an incredible head start as a business person to, to provide the best possible solutions with the greatest efficiency. Isaac Newton, the guy who talked about if I have seen further, uh, just because I was standing on the shoulders of giants, we're all each other's giants in this open source game. It's pretty great. Since we're all helping each other, it will allow you as service providers and people who are selecting service providers, your service providers can differentiate on their services and on their specialties. We do not have to occupy ourselves a great deal with rebuilding feature parity with um, you know, our little microsystem in-house CMS or whatever, we can benefit by coding things once and then improving the coding. If you have to make custom code for a client and they are wary of open sourcing it and putting it in the community repository, please tell them, listen, there are people out there who are smarter. We're going to give the code back. Somebody else is going to need it. And you buy this thing once, all the upgrades are free forever. Okay? And... Certainly, if I were to put code into the community, um, half of this room would come back and they'd know how to make it run faster and be more secure and better and give me five more features. But because I made the effort, because you know, potentially I had a good idea, I get a huge multiplication on my returns. And the multiplication on the returns of your clients, when they have to invest in new code, is potentially enormous. And it's a real, it's a real uh, benefit generator for them. So... Here's the four freedoms that we talked about. I just want to sum up in my last minute. I'm finding it fascinating. So if everyone wanted to hear Jan for a little bit longer, yeah. Well, oh, technically, I'm on. I can go on and on, but this is actually the last slide that I planned on. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> The three key factors that I boiled down to innovation, cost savings, and risk mitigation. Uh, it's not all listed here. Keep in mind the uh, you know, upgrades are free forever. 
the best of breed solutions, the build better is, is all in there as well, okay? But, you know, you are free to invest in your own team and your own vision and not send your money for license fees every year, okay? That's very, very powerful. You're free to be the manufacturer and the user. That means that you can take, uh, you know, if Drupal does 80% of what you need, you can define the other 20% and you can fix the 80% to be even better. It allows us to make, to realize our visions. It allows us, to, it's an, this is an incredible power that open source gives us. Let's not talk about saving money because the stuff's free. Let's talk about saving money because we can work efficiently, because we can reuse our code, because we can help each other and improve each other. We don't have to pay license fees, which changes our chain of investment. Invest in our own teams, uh, we can invest in our own visions, we can invest in our own businesses, okay? But not in someone else's license fees. It allows you to make, it allows you to buy better projects, not cheaper projects. If it has to be cheaper, you know, everybody's got their price point, everybody's got their market, it's fine. But what I'm trying to say, it, it, it allows, you don't have to sell to the bottom. It really allows you to offer people uh, better a, a better web, a better product, a better service, okay? And risk mitigation, you own the bricks, right? There is a Drupal 3 site that's still online, and it works. It looks really weird, um, but it does what the guy needs, and it's fine, and it's uh, se secure enough. Um, I don't think he has any user-generated content, which makes it a lot easier. But, um, you know, Drupal's yours to use for as long as you want, and for anything. Um, and in risk mitigation, uh, oh, see, I, I give this other talk where I talk about um, a little bit about how to do presentations. Can anyone tell me what the what, what's wrong with this slide? Because it's actually it's a terrible slide. Apart from the fact that there are too many words, yeah. and the second problem, right? So when you make presentations, the bottom third of the screen never put anything there. <laughs> However, the last big point down here says risk mitigation. Then it says you own the bricks. And the last point is you understand it, okay? And this is really fundamental. Given that you're allowed to study the code in open source, you're allowed to make your own decisions about how risky it is. You're allowed to really, really make smarter, smarter decisions. Uh, I've talked with a lot of people around the world and uh, watched some really great other presentations. Thank you to all of these people for helping me out with this. Um, there are probably more that I could list. Thank you for listening. Um, I would be, I am pretty much Horn Cologne across the web. My email is jam at and uh, I'm going to be here tonight and I'm going to be here all weekend. I'd really love to get the opportunity to meet those of you I don't know already and, uh, you know, please ask me anything you want uh, once I have a drink in my hand. <laughs> Thanks. That was great, wasn't it? Awesome. Yeah. Um, so, just a couple of housekeeping things, and then I'll let everyone go and grab a drink and network, and then we'll go to the pub as well afterwards. Um, so, yeah, thanks to everyone for attending, and hopefully you're sticking around for the next couple of days. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> so, two points. One, if you're not staying for the weekend, if you can just leave your lanyard on this table, and then we'll recycle them. That's uh, from...